test will measure how much oxygen microorganisms take up. First you'll need a dissolved oxygen kit, a nifty pair of waders, a fleeker and a flask. To start off the test you'll want to go in the water with your fleeker and your flask and you'll want to collect the water making sure not to have any air bubbles or as little air bubbles as possible for the test to work out correctly. This is a five day test. For, for the fleeker, you're going to want to store it in a dark place at room temperature. So what we'll be doing is after we do our dissolved oxygen test, um, we will wrap this fleeker in foil and store it for five days and then come back to it. The next step is to open chemical packets number one and number two and open them and pour them gently into the flask. After both chemicals are emptied in, we will want to take the cover, place it on top of the flask and invert it repeatedly until it turns an orangish yellow precipitate as shown inside of the flask. <laughs> Perfect! The next step is to wait for the orangish liquid portion to settle to beyond the halfway point in the glass bottle. You'll want to wait four to five minutes for all of the orange portion to settle to beyond the halfway point. Once it is settled, you will want to invert it once again until the orange is dispersed among the transparent portion of the solution. Place it back down and wait another four to five minutes until it is settled beyond the white line once again. While you're waiting, it's a good idea to prepare chemical number three. <laughs> Using a toenail clipper, you will want to attempt and open the very thick plastic packaging until you are able to get the chemical out. Oh no. It's okay if it takes a little while, because we have four to five minutes to burn. <laughs> Ta da! Ta da! Now that the orange portion of the solution has settled to the bottom once again, you want to take the open packet of chemical number three and empty it into the flask. Now that the solution has turned into a shade of yellow and the chemical number three has been emptied, you will want to invert it once again until the chemical is dispersed among the solution. Like so. Sounds familiar. After it has settled, you want to pour the solution into a smaller container, like so, until it is filled to get the proper amount. Wow, that was perfect. Next, you will want to put the smaller container on top of the smallest and invert once again so that none of the dosage is spilt and make sure all of it is emptied into the container. Next, you'll want to add some sodium thiosulfate using an eyedropper to the solution drop by drop. What you want to keep an eye out for and count is how many drops it takes for the solution to turn transparent. Make sure you are counting as this will later be used to calculate a Q value for the <laughs> biochemical oxygen demand. Izzy has counted a total of 10 drops for the color in the vial to match the white on the card beneath it. Therefore, we'll use the number 10 to calculate the value on the chart of the gray book. So now that we completed the dissolved oxygen test, we stored the water in the fleeker and we wrapped it completely in tin foil just to make sure that it stays as dark as possible. And so just to save us a little bit more, we're gonna be putting it in a cupboard for five days and then after that we'll come back and we'll do the uh, dissolved oxygen test again to see the difference between the two days. And here we have our water sample that is now five days old and ready for the second dissolved oxygen test. So the first step is going to be pouring the water into the flask in an attempt to get the least amount of air bubbles as possible. As seeing how 
as how we are not in the river. It'll be a little bit difficult, but we'll try to do the best we can. Like that. <laughs> but I got no air bubbles, so we're good. Yay! So we're gonna complete the same procedure that we did five days ago, and then we'll come back with the results. So on day one, we got 10 drops. On, uh, well, day five, we got nine drops this last test that we took. So now how we figure out um, for the BOD, we take the day one drops minus the day two drops, and so in this case, it'll be 10 minus 9, which equals 1. Um, and so then we refer to our book, page 65, for the BOD. And we look at this scale here. And because we have 1, we take 1, which is about here. And we move up to the line. And it's looking like it's about 96, 97. So that's how you find your Q value. Thanks for watching our how to biochemical oxygen demand test video.